Good morning and welcome to worship at Maple United Methodist Church on Thanksgiving Sunday, November the 21st, 2021. Hard to believe we've already reached Thanksgiving week here in this year. As I keep sharing with friends and family, it, it seems like last year didn't happen and this year is just moving too fast. But we're glad to have you with us and worshiping with us today. One of the things we're going to be doing in our worship service is collecting slips of paper that have been passed out among the congregation that says, on this Thanksgiving, I'm thankful for. And they, they were pre-advised to be thinking of things that they're especially grateful for this year. And we're talking about things that are not your usual gratitude, if you will. Not thankful for my home or my job or for the food on my table or even for my family, but think of the little things, the unusual things, the, the special little blessings that God has put into your life that mean so much, that make each day a little bit better each day, a little bit more enjoyable. We all have them. We just have to be reminded from time to time to celebrate them and to give thanks. Here our opening greeting on this Thanksgiving Day Sunday. Let us give thanks for this beautiful day, for it is a gift from our Creator. Let us give thanks for the water, without which life would not be possible. Let us give thanks for Grandmother Earth, who protects and nourishes us. We give thanks for earth, air, sun, and water. In these we see the hand of our Creator, even Creator Himself, for He is in all that He has made. Let us give thanks for this life. It is a gift from Creator, and we have the possibility of living in it. Let us live it to His praise and His glory. Let us pray together this day. Lord God, as we celebrate Thanksgiving, we have many reasons to praise you. You gave us this good earth, a wide sky, a warm sun, the everlasting hills. We hear the songs of birds and see the splendor of autumn fields. Fill our hearts with gratitude and save us from being so blind that we miss even one of your blessings. In the name of your Son, Jesus the Christ. Amen. The more and more that I hear our daily news, the more aware I become of the things that we tend to take for granted in this life. Things like getting up in the morning. Things like tasting that first cup of coffee. Or being able to pick up the phone and call a family member or a friend. We forget the freedom and the gift of reaching out. And yet every week as we gather together for worship, we share together as a church family our prayer concerns, our needs for family, friends, sometimes even for total strangers or situations that we've heard about on TV or the internet. We have a number of folks in our congregation that are dealing with COVID still. We have a number that are dealing with cancer and cancer treatments. We have a number of folks that have been or are in the hospital. 
Just this morning I had a request come across the internet for the husband of a friend of mine from childhood who suddenly found himself on the floor one day. He spent three days in the hospital, two of those days in the hallway in the emergency room because there was no bed available for him. When he finally did get to a room after two days of testing, they found out that he had had a heart attack and was dealing with full-blown sepsis infection throughout his body. There are so many things going on right now in our world, in our health world, that we need to be aware of and definitely need to be praying for. So today I ask you to lift in prayer Jamie, Joni, Grace, family members that perhaps you know of that have health issues going on, or maybe some family issues, some dysfunction within the family that's causing turmoil as we go into this Thanksgiving week. Let us pray for one another, for our physical healing, our psychological healing, our emotional healing, as we come before God's throne of grace this day. Let us pray. It is the season of thanksgiving, Lord. And for many of us, our thoughts return to our childhood, our childhood homes, gathering together around the family table, sharing a meal, laughing together, just enjoying our time together. But Lord, there are some that don't have those memories. They don't remember gathering together with family because there wasn't a strong family to, to gather with. There are those today, Lord, that as they become young adults, the family has splintered and separated and, and there's tension whenever they get together. We're certainly aware throughout our society these days that there are families that are more than splintered, they're broken. They're decimated by COVID-19 and community violence and other things. So as we come into this time of giving thanks, we are very, very much aware that everything that we have is temporary. And everything that we have is a gift from you. As we bow before you this day, O oh Lord, I would pray that above all things you would give to us a grateful heart. Eyes to see the blessings that we enjoy each and every day. Ears to hear the laughter and the songs of the birds and the rustle of leaves in the trees. As well as ears that hear the cry of the oppressed, the disadvantaged, and the hurting. Give us eyes to see not only the blessings, but also where we can make a difference. Where our words, our presence, our skills and gifts might be able to help someone else over the hump or through the valley. We pray, O oh Lord, that as we come into this week of thanksgiving, that the words we share and the attitudes that we project would be a blessing to those around us. That we would not be a stumbling block to anyone. But that by our actions, by our words, by our demeanor, we would point people to you. We pray for those, O oh Lord, this week that are especially dealing with surgeries, with complications, with cancer diagnoses and cancer treatments. We pray that you'd be with those in the hospitals that are waiting for beds and those that are having to use beds because of illness. 
and recovery. Let your healing presence move through the halls of our hospitals, our nursing homes, our, our senior centers, and touch lives. Heal bodies, bless minds and spirits. Be with our country, Lord, as we continue to walk a very thin line between peace and chaos, between certainty and confusion, between hope and despair. May your evangels of hope win the day, grant to us the words to speak, the gifts and skills to share that will help to help our nation to turn the corner to become once again what you have called us to be, the land of the free. Be with each one of us this day as we bow in your presence. Enable us to hear your word. But more than that, enable us to do your word, to be your people of action in a world that desperately needs things changed and things done. Guide us this day and into the week that lies ahead. Pour out your spirit upon us that we might hear your words and follow our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in all that we do. These things we pray with gratitude in your presence and in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ who has taught us to pray together saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. This morning's scripture comes from the book of Psalms. One of the Thanksgiving Psalms, the 103rd writing of King David. Praise the Lord, O my soul. All my inmost being praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works righteousness and justice for all the oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his deeds to the people of Israel. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbor his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he knows how we are formed. He remembers that we are dust. As for man, his days are like the grass. He flourishes like a flower of the field. The wind blows over it, and it is gone. 
its place remembers it no more. But from everlasting to everlasting, the Lord's love is with those who fear him, and his righteousness with their children's children, with those who keep his covenant and remember to obey his precepts. The Lord has established his throne in, in the heavens, and his kingdom rules over all. Praise the Lord, you his angels, you mighty ones who do his bidding, who obey his word. Praise the Lord, all his heavenly hosts, you servants who do his will. Praise the Lord, all his works everywhere in his dominion. Praise the Lord, O my soul. This is the word of God for God's people. Thanks be to God. As toddlers, we lisp our thanks to God. God is great, God is good, and we thank him for our food. As we grow older, we learn to sing our thanks for health and strength and daily food. We praise your name, O oh God. Or we sing, thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Thank you, Lord, for giving to me thy great salvation, so rich and free. But somehow as we get older, we get a little harder, a little more cynical, maybe even a bit more presumptuous. We may remember to count our blessings, especially as Thanksgiving Day approaches, but the rest of the time, we often tend to take God's blessings for granted. Well, don't get me wrong, we don't do it on purpose. It's not a deliberate decision. And yet somehow we begin to fall into the habit of thinking that we have it coming. God owes it to us as his children. Counting our blessings is something that only the heathen or the borderline believer needs to do. We already know that God gives us all these things. And to enumerate them, to spell them out, well, that's boring. It's a waste of our time. But this morning I want us to spend a few moments together counting our blessings. Taking a look at the ordinary, everyday things that comprise our lives and realizing anew that it is, after all, only by the grace of God that we have these things. One of the gifts that I think we often take for granted is the gift of our five senses. Have you ever had a, a hand or a foot go to sleep? Maybe you've had a moment or more of partial paralysis one part of your body or another. As a child, did you ever wonder what it would feel like not to be able to feel the grass tickling your toes or the sun warming your arms? What would it be like to see your child or grandchild giving you a hug and not be able to feel their arms encircling your waist? What if you couldn't hear the birds calling a greeting to the rising sun? Or the gentle rustle of falling leaves or the creaking tree branches after a January ice storm? What would life be like without the fragrance of the blossoming orchards in the spring, the, the pungent odor of burning leaves in the fall? or that crisp, clean smell after the first snowfall of winter. 
Can you imagine not being able to see the glorious circus of fall? The light of Christmas wonder in a child's eyes? The intricacies of a snowflake? The delicate coloring of the budding trees in the springtime? What if everything you ate tasted like cardboard or nothing at all? Thank God for the five senses that we have. Celebrate each sight, sound, odor, taste, touch. Relish them. Enjoy them as if tomorrow they might be taken from you, as we have found with COVID-19, they can. As the psalmist declared, this, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Enjoy each day to its fullest. Let us celebrate the temporary, for we know not when it will be taken away. Enjoy this day. While you're thanking God for your senses, praise Him for your emotions as well. Imagine not being able to feel anger or ecstasy joy or sorrow? What if you went through life as an unfeeling zombie, a robot incapable of knowing success or failure, victory or defeat, sorrow or joy, guilt or forgiveness? Thank God you can feel and express your feelings. Celebrate tears and laughter, tranquility and frustration, serenity and anger, joy, and even sorrow. As you count your blessing high on the list, you should count the love of family and friends. To live is to love. And to love is to be fully alive. Science and medicine have both proved that love and acceptance are vital to human life. We can exist without love. But without the concern, caring of at least one other person in our lives, we become self-centered, uncaring, unfeeling, robot-like individuals. Thank God for love. Thank God for security from natural disaster. During this season of the year, as we thank God for the bounty of the harvest, we can be grateful here, at least in this part of Michigan, that we haven't had to deal with some of the horrific floods that have inundated other parts of our country this spring and fall. We didn't have to deal with unending wildfires or subsequent mudslides as the fall rains came. In spite of the winds and even the tornadoes that have passed nearby, we can thank God that none of us has been injured by any of those acts of God. We can enjoy the beauty of a spectacular fall season. We can glory in the changing seasons of Southwest Michigan. We can be grateful that we did not have to deal with an overabundance of some of the snow that other parts of the nation dealt with this past year. Here at Maple, we thank God for our church. As we look around us on any given Sunday morning, we're looking at a, 
a building that has been a landmark in Battle Creek for over 133 years. Maybe some of your ancestors helped to found this community of faith because they believed in God. They were grateful for the right and opportunity to worship him in this free land. And each Sunday they gathered together in this place of worship to be strengthened in faith and the fellowship of their friends and, yes, to count their blessings. So as you count your blessings today, count this congregation, count your congregation, count its founders, your friends who are worshiping with you this day. All those who will come and worship long after we're gone. Of course, this church and others like it could not have existed for over a century if this was not a free nation founded by those who believed in the freedom of religion. The men and women who founded these United States established this as one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. That means that in America we have the right to worship where, when, and as we choose. Unlike many of the socialist or communistic countries, we can gather here as often as we want, sing as loud as we want, shout amen if we want to. We can worship here or in our homes, even in a restaurant, on a street corner. We can gather together to sing hymns on a Sunday morning or a Tuesday night, or Friday afternoon. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people whom he has chosen as his heritage, the psalmist says. Indeed, as a nation, we have been blessed. And as we count our blessings, we must count this free land in which we live and those who sacrificed to help keep it free. Among the blessings we should be counting today and often take for granted is our salvation. Thank God that his forgiveness is not something we have to earn. As Paul reminded the Romans, the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life. We can't earn his forgiveness. We can't ever be good enough to deserve his love, his forgiveness, or eternal life. If God's love was based solely on goodness or badness, on our righteousness or our sinfulness, few, if any, of us would receive anything at all. From God. As Paul reminded the Romans, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. We receive from God not what we deserve, but what his love is willing to give us. Thank God that we receive his favor and not what's due to us. How often, when we're counting our blessings, do we forget to thank God for sending Jesus? The Son of God left all his divinity and glory behind in order to come to this earth, to be born under the humblest, most demeaning of circumstances. Born of a peasant woman just four days' journey from the town where he would be raised and live most of his life, where he was trained as the son of a small town carpenter, the Son of God came to live a while among us, to show us how to live. 
teaching us about God and his love for us and the power of faith. And then he went to the cross, underwent the cruelest, most torturing form of death that mankind has ever devised, just to show us how much God loves us. But it didn't end there. Jesus rose from the dead in order to give us hope and faith for the future. As Paul wrote to the Corinthians in the 15th chapter of his first letter, if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile. You're still in your sins. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are of all men most to be pitied. But in fact, he says, Christ has been raised from the dead. The first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Truly, thanks be to God for all the blessings that he bestows upon us. Thanks be to God for Jesus and his redemption purchasing power of his death on the cross. Thanks be to God for his forgiveness and our salvation. Thanks be to God for this free nation where this congregation and other congregations like it are free to gather for worship for learning, for prayer and praise. Thank God for this free nation where this congregation could be formed and could worship without interference for over 135 years. Thanks be to God for the beauty of the changing seasons. Thanks be to God for the love of family and friends and all the emotions that we feel and can express. Thanks be to God for our five senses that allow us to live in and enjoy this world which he's given us. Count your blessings. Name them one by one, not just the obvious ones of life and health and daily food, but the blessings that we take for granted as well. As the psalmist wrote, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Let us pray. We try to be grateful, Lord, we really do. But sometimes we are so blinded by a sense of entitlement. We have enjoyed your blessings for so long that we forget that we truly exist only by your grace and your pleasure. Remind us this day, this week, of all the blessings, all the benefits that are ours in and through and because of your grace. Open our eyes, our ears, all of our senses to recognize your presence in our daily lives. Enable us to see, hear, touch, smell, feel all of the blessings that you have poured out upon us. And, O oh Lord, make us truly a grateful people this day and every day. Amen.
as you go into the week that lies before you. As you sit down with family and friends on Thanksgiving Day, take a moment to pause, to give thanks to God for all his benefits, to recognize that you are among God's most blessed people. Thanks be to God for his unspeakable gifts. Amen.